the world? It's your man Melvin Taylor, I, I, and you're tuned in for another episode of The Alternative with Melvin Taylor Radio Show right here on WHCR 90.3 FM New York, The Voice of Harlem. During quarantine, you can also find the show on my YouTube channel, Melvin Taylor, I, I, as well as if you go onto our mix cloud so you can hear the show in totality, aka if you end up missing the live version of the show and want to hear with its music, all the bells and whistles, go ahead over head to Mixcloud, M-I-X-C-L-O-U-D, type in the alt with Mel and it will pop up for you there too, man. We got a lot to talk about today, especially group chat news, a lot of things going on with all, we're just kind of recapping everything that happened so far in 2020. Sports are on their way back. What did Uber and Yelp do this week to help out black businesses? Who are some of the celebrities that have been tripping and are not tripping? And of course, say it with your chest. We got to talk about since all we got all this protest going on, what will be the next phase? What will be the next step of what we need to do as a nation to be able to move forward? Remember, it's the alternative right here with your man Melvin Taylor. I, I, you can find us every single week, WHR 90.3 FM New York, or you can find me on YouTube, Melvin Taylor. I, I. Let's get into some music and we'll be right back. Okay, okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Alternative with your man Melvin Taylor. I, I, you can find us here every single week, WHCR 90.3 FM New York, the voice of Harlem, or on my YouTube channel, Melvin Taylor. I, I, 16,000 subscribers and growing. And if you'd like to contribute, to the radio show, as well as contribute to a bunch of the other things that I'm doing on YouTube, whether that's some of the short films or sketches or videos in general that I'm giving you guys, please make sure to find me on Patreon. Uh, you can type in Melvin Taylor II and be able to find the different tiers and explanations for how what you contribute will be able to help out. Okay, so first things first that we do when we hop into the show, gotta talk about the alternative role, what's been my pathway this past week to take it one step closer to getting towards my dreams. This past week, had an interview from my man Black Soul. He released his debut album called Take Your Time. He is a musician from out in Tacoma, Washington, who has uh, worked with a lot of the big players that are in the game right now, man. How, how he's, he's already being represented by uh, Pooh from Big Brother, right? But on top of that, he's also done work with Macklemore, Playboy Cardi, Anderson Pack, and he's been in the hot seat with Dr. Dre, AKA he's worked in a studio session with Dr. Dre, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now that this is something that you will want to listen to. You will want to hear his story, how he got into the music business and why it has become so important to him to leave his mark by taking his time with his music. So make sure... Make sure that you go to Spotify podcast or to Google Play to be able to listen to the show. Remember, it is the Alternative Role podcast. Make sure to go ahead and check that out. Additionally, this past week, your boy was on Lakers Central. Shout out to my man, Alex, the Lakers Central CEO, who brought me on for a panel. And we discussed what does it mean to be a black journalist today, to be in media today and to be a black person and how It is the time right now to use your voice to shed light on a lot of things that have been happening. It was so great to be able to be on that panel as well as with the wonderful women that we had on the panel as well. Man, I'm telling you guys, you should definitely go check it out. The audio should have dropped by the time that this radio show is out. So if you can, please go ahead and listen to that. Let them know that your boy sent you over there. And I'm sure Alex will shout you out in some way, shape or form. Now, moving on. The YouTube channel. I know that I haven't had any uh, videos really on there the past week and a half or so. Y'all got to excuse me, man. I've just been going through everything that we're going through um, in the nation right now, just like you guys. And honestly, I haven't felt uh, particularly it, it kind of felt dirty to, to be honest with you guys to like even think about what I wanted to do with my YouTube channel or with my camera or to create some content that wasn't just me speaking to you all about what's been going on um, in in the news, really. Like anytime I would think about maybe doing a reaction video or some kind of funny video, it just it just felt dirty to me. So I had to really take some time away to get my mind together, get my mindset together, like kind of dive into everything that's going into the news and then just kind of build myself back up to say, okay, when I'm ready, I'll be able to give that to you guys. So I'm, I'm almost about there. I think I'll be able to do it some point in time this week. So just make sure you stay uh, tuned for that real quick. Got a shout out to all the fans. Most definitely shout out to Tanya. Shout out to young Chris, Cole Wright, Bone. What's up, Naomi? Hope you're doing good. Please go to bed on time. Uh, and also shout out to the Patreon supporters. 
Shout out to my man Eric. Shout out to Larry. Shout out to JL. Shout out to OC. And shout out to Paul Winfield as well. I greatly appreciate all the support that you guys have been able to give to me and have given me over the years and will continue to give me as I build um, everything it is that I'm doing and going along this alternative road right now, man. I, I From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate each and every last one of you guys. And I hope that, you know, you being able to be on this journey with me gives you back some sort of satisfaction and also helps you along in your journey with what it is that you're doing. So moving on, we got to talk about the albums from the last week that I listened to. And like I said before, guys, I kind of been in a mood, so I haven't really listened to anything as of late. But I'm going to tell you all right now, man, like I said last week when I said I was in a uh, a J. Cole, Kendrick, Sci High to Prince, Ice Cube kind of mood. I've never fully listened to Ice Cube's album, America's Most Wanted. And I feel as if this might be the time to really be able to do that. A lot of people don't know the primary reason that I started my YouTube channel and with reactions is because of how much I enjoy them, right? I watch reactions even before um, um, before I started the channel, before I did anything, I would just like watch them as a source of entertainment for me. I love getting that feeling and that experience of watching something or experiencing something with someone for the first time, right? And in college, I would always do that with music, but I would run and go tell my friends, yo, have you heard this? Have you heard this? Have you heard this, right? And being able to take that another step with you guys and have it um, on the YouTube channel is amazing to me. And, And again, it's something that I'm always going to do no matter what phase of my career or life that I'm in. And I think that right now might be the best time to do something with Ice Cube because I've been thinking back and forth. What is it that I want to do? How is it that I want to do it? I know that I've been wanting to do it because for whatever reason, Ice Cube, not just as a musician, right, but also as a businessman and as a uh, movie maker has been on my mind as well lately with how he's just such a, a talented multi, multi-hyphenate, right? And how that's a, uh, that's inspiring to me because that is what I aspire to be able to be. So being able to listen to that album um, sometime for the first time this, this upcoming week is... Uh, Something I'm definitely going to do, man. I think that that is going to be the next video that you guys end up getting from me before I end up doing um, anything else or jumping back into any rock videos uh, or uh, any hip hop video, any other hip hop videos, I should say, and the like. Uh, And for everybody that usually at this point I go over what's been happening in the sketch comedy world, man, we still in the the Rona still a thing and uh, protesting is still going on. We all still inside. I know the phase one is supposed to be starting for New York City very soon. So we'll see how things either kick up or uh, start to die down. But right now, ain't none of that really going on. But I do got some ideas, though. I do got some ideas. So I'm, I'm still working, still creating how I can on that aspect. Now, we will get over into group chat news, but we're going to hit y'all with some music right here. Remember, you're listening to The Alternative with your boy, Melvin Taylor I.I. You can find us everywhere, The Alt with Mel or The Alternative Melvin Taylor I.I. All right. Keep it locked right here. 90.3 FM, New York. Group chat news. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back right here on The Alt with Mel. I hope y'all enjoying y'all selves today, man. Make sure that throughout everything that is going on, especially if you're black right now, that you are taking some time to be able to take a break from everything and just Get back in touch with yourself, man, because everything that's going on is a lot and you don't want to overwhelm yourself. We need rest. This is a marathon, not a sprint. All the justice that we need will not be solved in three, four days. All right. So make sure that you are taking your rest, take your time. So that way we can not make this a moment, but make this a movement going forward. OK. All right. Group chat news. In case you guys don't know, some of the topics that be floating around the group chat so that you send the people in the DMs that you don't really like talking about all like that. Or let me not even say don't like talking about. It. You just kind of like to gossip about it, but you don't want everybody to know you got to about it. All right. First things first. Got to talk about insecure last week. Oh, my God, bro. If you did not love. Issa and Lawrence on Insecure last week. You ain't got no heart, bro. You ain't got no heart. The, it felt like it felt like watching the photograph. I had a friend tell me that he gave her photograph vibes and she 100 percent was correct, man. It felt like watching the photograph. And for you guys that don't know, it was a love movie that came out um, earlier this year that uh starred Issa Rae as well as Lakeith Stanfield in it and not not really we don't really get 
stories like love movies with black leads like that that are pushed on a national level this past week the episode felt like it as Easton Lawrence came back up and went on a date and was able to talk a lot of things out now yo it was funny that they was cracking on each other right especially when Issa came in and fell flat on the face to start the episode sorry spoiler alert and y'all that ain't really watch the rest of Insecure y'all just might want to skip ahead real quick till we get to the next topic in group chat news but um yeah they, it was funny how they was cracking on each other I loved how they really got into the meat of what happened between them when they actually got to talking on a date and how um they just weren't on the same page and how if they happen to be on the same page they still might be together today leaving the restaurant seeing Issa O uh, uh, boo thing and then they end up going and having like the cute little I don't even like using the word cute but they like had the little date with the like clouds and the art and all of that that was fire and then uh, you know Issa finding out that Lawrence actually bought a ring and everything was real cool too and um, what else was I gonna say man I'm, I'm so wrapped up in all the lovey doveyness man look Condola texting this man the entire time trying to be like, yo, can we talk? Yo, can we talk? Yo, can we talk? I seen some theories that people were like, yo, what if she pregnant? I swear, insecure, if y'all give Lawrence a baby and him and Issa and get back together, I'm going to be mad. It's, I don't know what, bro. Do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Let this king live. Let him live his life. He's been through enough already trying to figure himself out in his late 20s, early 30s. Come on, man. Let this man live 100%. But for Issa, I got to hand it over to her, man. She finally went for what she wanted because at, at this point in time, man, this is probably the last part I'm going to say about this because I'm, I'm just encouraging you, please go watch the last episode um, of Insecure before the one with Issa and Molly. Um, comes on by the time y'all hearing this that episode will already be up and i'm probably gonna have a uh have a lot to say about that as well because i know that they need to have their conversation to see if they're actually gonna be friends moving forward but um i love the fact that Issa and i was about to say molly Issa and lawrence are now two totally different people than who they were during season one so now they're in a place of they can make the decisions that they couldn't then about what they want in their life right Issa said i don't want to leave I want to stay here tonight, right? So Lawrence, by by going with that, said, "I'm not worrying about this Condola situation. I'm worrying, I'm worrying about what me and Issa about to do." And then when Issa leaves, it's not a walk of shame, but an empowerment walk with her saying, "I'm reclaiming who I am in my space. I'm figuring out my life and what it is that I truly want. I love it, love it." Absolutely beautiful, man. Molly needs to get uh, red real quick in this next episode, so we're going to see what's going on with that too, man. All right, after Insecure, but can we just recount real quick all the things that happened in 2020 so far? I might not even have the full list right here, right? But let's just go through some of the things that have happened this year, because if this year don't have its own chapter in the history books moving forward, I'm going to be mad as I don't know what. So 2020 so far, remember what when the year started... There's the World War Three was trending online. Y'all remember that? How long ago was that? World War Three was trending. Absolutely insane. Right. And then obviously you had rest in peace to my goat, my greatest of all time, Kobe Bryant, as well as his daughter, Gianna. And um, everyone else that passed away in the helicopter crash. Then we had Corona breakout. Right. We had quarantine lockdown. We had everybody talking about the 5G towers and how that was messing with uh, how the, the waves from the, the, what was it, the signals, the waves from the towers were messing with your brain. Like, then we had the UFO sightings when the Pentagon basically said, yeah, there's been unidentified objects within our stratosphere. Don't forget about that at all. Oh, hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Murder hornets. We also had murder hornets that we had to deal with. Then you come into everything that people are protesting about right now. George Floyd. We had, um, uh, excuse me, Ahmaud Arbery, I believe, was first. And then Breonna Taylor. And then, unfortunately, George Floyd. And that's not even, forgive me for not mentioning some of the other deaths that we've had surrounding this. But we've also had several other police brutality deaths that have occurred as well. These just happen to be the big three that we know about. Then we had the riots happen outside of that. Soho somewhat got ransacked. I know I've had phone calls from people in Chicago that have told me it'll parts of it will never be the same again from how bad it is and that people are leaving, right? In addition to that, we sent people out of space. Any of y'all forget that? 
We had a whole space launch. Yeah. NASA and SpaceX teamed together, sent some people out of space, bro. Outer space. And I'm new, I'm usually the guy when it comes to all of that stuff. I for completely forgot about it because so much stuff had happened. Crazy. Crazy. On top of that, you still got the police acting wild. They knocked that old man upside the head. Well, not really upside the head. They kind of pushed him after he was returning a helmet. And then he started bleeding out from his ear when his head hit the pavement. And there was a a bunch of other um, cops showed up to clap for all the cops that said that they decided to resign after those cops got punished. That's for later on in the conversation. We'll get to that later, right? And um, something else, uh, Ebola. Yeah, we had a few Ebola cases pop up in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm telling you, this year right now is for the history books, ladies and gentlemen. And we only in June. We only halfway there. Not to mention our president melting down on Twitter time and time again and holding the Bible upside down. And then Thor, I mean, I'm, I'm really just playing God, right? But Thor decided to strike the National Monument with lightning. Bro, we've had so much happen and it's only June and I'm still forgetting stuff. I wonder if the murder hornets was kind of like, yeah, y'all got a lot. It's a lot of tension around here. Um, We just going to head out and come back at another time. Cause this ain't, this ain't it right now. Like I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll be back later. Like I, I wonder what that thought process for them was because it was like murder hornets are here. Never mind. We got okay racism. COVID was like it's halftime. Who's the halftime act? Racism popped up. It's a, it's a dang on shame that uh, <laughs> it's, it really is a shame that even during a quarantine racism still had time to pop its head out it don't make no sense whatsoever but that's just kind of a quick recap of everything that we've been going through and that leads me to say that while people have been outside don't be fooled if people begin to say that COVID-19 cases have risen back up due to the protesters because remember two three weeks ago when everybody was still inside and everything was fine, that's when everybody was out for Memorial Day weekend. So those cases will be popping up around this upcoming week slash last week. Anybody that began to get COVID or has COVID now because of the protesting and whatnot that's been going on won't pop up for another week, week and a half. So make sure that you keep that in mind as you begin to see news and stories break out. All right, going into sports. Dun, dun, dun. I can't even do the rest of it because I, I don't I don't know if they can sue me for that. I hope that they can't. I love Stuart Scott, man. So ESPN, don't ever do that to me. Okay, moving on. The NBA is back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lakers might get their championship. I ain't even going to say Mike. The Lakers going to get their championship this year, baby. Let's do it. All right. So the NBA Board of Governors voted on Thursday to approve a 22-team format to restart the season and it's going to begin on July 31st in Orlando, Florida. Now, the reason that they're pushing it back all the way to July is because they want to give NBA players enough time to be able to get back in shape. For those of you that don't know, um, I'm a big Lakers fan. I don't understand how you could not know this at this point in time, but I'm a huge Lakers fan, right? One of the key people I've been following on Twitter for a long time is Jared Dudley. I love Jared Dudley because he's one of the guys that have been around the league and loves sharing the wealth that he's accumulated, all the knowledge that he's accumulated from being in the league. So throughout this quarantine, every time news about the NBA will pop back up, he would make sure to come in with kind of like how veterans in the league need to be looking at things or how they are looking at things and how some of the younger guys in the league need to be looking at things and well as well. And he's been pushing for, hey, we need to make sure that we have enough time to have a training camp, so to speak, so that way people can get back in shape because most NBA players are living paycheck to paycheck and don't really have the big house with access to a gym inside of it, right? So he's been somebody for sure I've been following and I'm glad to see that they pushed it back that far. Now, underneath this plan, there'll be 13 Western Conference teams and nine Eastern Conference teams that will play eight regular season games that are gonna be seeding games. So this could be a possible play-in tournament for the AFC and the playoffs will all be in Orlando at the Walt Disney World Resort, which I think is gonna be, gonna be dope. Here's the one thing I don't like though. They've been playing around with the idea of pumping in sound so that way it wouldn't feel off for uh, the NBA players or for not even the players, for the fans that are going to be watching. Here's what I got to say about that, right? Do you know how many people play basketball every day 
with no crowd, where you just hear the voices and the squeak on the floor, right? There's nothing wrong with that. How many players have gone through the AAU circuits only playing in minimal crowds? I think it's actually a great idea to say, you know what, forget it. We just gonna have the players play, right? We gonna have the players play and squeak, squeak on the court, ball bouncing, commentators talking. Just go with it that way. I don't enjoy the idea of them being like, we might pump sound in or use sound from NBA 2K to kind of help things out. Like it, that that just kind of bothers me. Do you know how many AAU teams have to do that yearly? Like, or, or every weekend? Let me not say yearly. Like, I'm putting it all in. It's making one big number. But on a week-to-week basis, there's so many players that have to go through that. Why why not just return it to the roots? You know? I, I love the fact that me and my cousins was joking that... um that uh, they kind of putting them on an AAU basketball schedule and they toying around with how they going to bring things back. Like whoever has, whoever would have home court advantage might stay in a better hotel or something like that, right? Like that, that kind of is hilarious to me. In addition to that, I would love to see whatever teams are like eliminated. What if those are the teams that's in the stands? What if those are the guys that's watching? I would love that, bro. That would be so cool. Like, you come down to the last two teams in the Eastern and Western Conference, and everybody that's in the stands are the rest of the teams that didn't make it. That would be crazy, bro. That would be crazy. Please, NBA, let that happen, because that would be absolutely amazing. All right, moving on to baseball. I really ain't got too much to say, because they might not play at all, because they're tripping over money. Baseball still ain't even paying people. You know, they're not paying AAA. I'm sorry, but like baseball, this is the one time where y'all just need to get with the program and get it together. Me and my roommate were talking and we we came up with the or he came, he was telling me about an idea that he had. and We discussed it where uh, we came up with why not go to a 50 game schedule, go to a 50 game schedule. So that way you can still play. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Wow. I just you ever completely blank on something and then just. Just want to come back to it. There we go. Come to a 50 game schedule so that way you won't miss out on this money, miss out on all this viewership, and it will get people excited about the game again. You know, I can't even think for myself the last time that I was excited about a baseball game. But you make that into 50 games, every game means something now. I think baseball, forgive me if I'm wrong, guys, like OC might be able to tell me, there are 140 baseball games. By the time I get to 86, I don't care. I'm at 114, I don't care. I'm even at 133. If I'm a team on the bottom of the league, man, I ain't cared in a long time. Right? If you make it 50, every game means something. If you go on a three-game losing streak, that's your butt. That might be your season. You never know. You have a bad two weeks, it's a wrap for y'all. Because everybody has to play so much more efficiently than usual. Make it 50 games. Make it 50 games. You can put an asterisk next to the stats. So that way they'll know, yo, this is during the, the great quarantine of 2020. Right? And then you, you, will, you will be able to open it up to having so much more changes moving back onto what your regular schedule would be. Also, one other thing I'm going to say. For baseball, y'all need to get it together with being able to share these videos because you see that the NBA and the NFL and blew up with being able to share videos. And the fact that y'all are like, no, it has to be from a baseball account, blah, 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 all that BS. Y'all, y'all screwing yourselves. You really are. One last thing for a hop on baseball, man, let people flip the bats. Like, I'm, uh, I need some attitude back in baseball, bro. Give me 50 games where everybody got to play hard and efficient and some attitude with bat flipping. And that will give, I will watch every White Sox game. I will care. I will care, care, like for real. So we'll see what's up with that. NFL, okay. I've been wanting to talk about this. Roger Goodell, right? We already had the Drew Brees stuff, which you know, I might, I'm gonna get to a little bit later. Um, but recently, Roger Goodell came out with a video, you know, um, speaking against racism and white supremacy and how he needs to pay attention to uh, what the league and what its players are saying about it and how he wants his players to be able to, excuse me, his players, he wants the players within the league to speak openly about how they feel about these things and that he will personally be making calls to the players who have spoken out. Here's what I got to say. If your first call is not to Colin Kaepernick, I don't believe anything that you said. It's a bunch of lip service. 
Your first call needs to be to Colin Kaepernick. Right? You need to apologize to him because in the video, you didn't even say his name. Right? You need to apologize to him for what y'all did, for what he went through, and give him a fair shot. Well, Melvin, what does it look like giving him a fair shot? There's such a surplus of quarterbacks now, he might not get a job. I already understand this. I'm on record saying, yo, I don't even think that Cap will get a job anymore because Cam Newton don't even have a job. Right? Granted, you know, injury and also what they want for their finances will be different. But the fact that Cam Newton is still out there is very troubling for me to believe that Colin Kaepernick will get a job. However, here's a way in which the NFL can set it up so that they can help him to get a job and also scrub all this stuff away from, uh, you know, kind of scrub this stain away. Remember the whole workout that they were going to do in Atlanta? This would be the perfect time for the NFL to say, we sorry. Let's bring that back up. We're going to give you another full workout. It'll be mandatory that all 32 teams are there, that their scouts are there, and that people that can make decisions within the front office are there. Right? We'll bring in uh, high-quality free agents or guys that you want to be able to work out with, and we will make sure that this videotape is sent to the staff of all 32 teams. Not only will they have to take home what it is that we're giving them, we will also make sure to send it to them as well. And from there, a decision could be made. Now, is that going... Is that actually justice for everything that Colin's been through? Man, no. In no way, shape, or form. But it's a start. It's definitely a start, and it's a way for them to get back into the good graces of people. Because now you just look like a fool demeaning Colin, saying all these things, and now turning back and saying, you know what, you was right, I'm sorry, Drew Brees. You just look like a fool at this point in time. So unless he calls Colin and goes through some sort of resurgence with him, all that is lip service. I don't want to hear you talk about it. All right, Uber and Yelp actually said that they're going to help out black businesses this week, and I wonder if any of y'all heard about this. So Uber um, said that the Uber Eats app will now enable customers to order from black-owned restaurants with free delivery for the rest of this year. I like it. I don't just like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think that this could be something that, moving forward, right? They're going to do it for the rest of this year, but moving forward, this would be the time where, um, say, for example, during Black History Month, or um, I want to say Hispanic History Month. I'm not sure if it's Hispanic or it's Latin History Month. I believe it's Latin History Month, right? During these different months when you have these themes, this would be high time for Uber to do something like this, right? Or for Seamless or Postmates or whatever it is that you use to do something like this to encourage, hey, we understand that there have been systematic issues with people not only being able to get to this level of business, but also promote it. We're going to make sure that in every way that we can help to correct those errors by giving you free delivery when you order from any of these restaurants during this month or during this period. I think that would be a great thing to do, right? And uh, not only that, but he said that, excuse me, um, not he said that, but Chief Executive Dara Cro- oh, wow, I'm going to say this name so wrong. Cro- so while she it's, it's really, there's it, a lot of, yo, it's a lot of consonants in his name, y'all. I'm, I'm not going to hold you. I ain't saying that. I ain't saying that correctly. But Chief Executive Dara, right, said in an email on Thursday that um, in U.S. customers in the coming weeks would be offered a discount as well for ride hailing trips to black owned small businesses that have been affected by coronavirus, too. Like, obviously, I'm going to be for anything and everything black. Why? Because I'm a black man, but also because of the injustices that we face and our businesses have faced throughout time and throughout history. But right now, being able to do something like this, as well as donating money, which I'm I'm assuming that they have done. I haven't seen any tweet about it or unless I've just blatantly missed something at this point in time. Right. Um, this will be something that they should do for different backgrounds moving forward for people. Right. Like this should be something during, like I said before, during that month that's going on, this should be something that's done. Because, again, you need to address the different systems that have put in place for how high people can be able to go. And this is a way for the niche that you're in, you know, the business, the industry. There we go. That's the word I was looking for, for the industry for you that you're in to 
slowly and incrementally correct things, but also make sure you're working on it on a bigger level too. Moving forward, Yelp has said that they are launching a new tool that will allow the business, uh, excuse me, that will allow businesses on the platform to identify themselves as uh, black owned, which is going to be awesome because right now, look, I'm probably going to be buying black owned stuff for the next couple months. So I would love to be able to know that. Thank you for that very much, Yelp. Um, Additionally, they said that they are donating $50,000 to the Equal Justice Initiative and the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And that, um, excuse me, hold on, Yelp will also double its match of donations from employees who contribute money to organizations that are either Black-led, Black-serving, including uh, Black Futures Lab and the Know Your Rights Camp through June. I like that. I like that a lot, man. It, It shows that, yes, we're not just talking about it. We want to be about it as well. But I'm gonna get into that more, um, Uh, a little bit later on when I get to say it with your chest as well, because while all this is good, there's going to be some follow up involved as well. How much of the work are you saying now that you'll do and how much will you do as time continues to go on? Right. Don't just do it now because it's the hot, trendy thing. Make sure that you're actually doing this work moving forward. Okay. Celebrities who are and who are not tripping. Do I really need to talk about Drew Brees, man? Honestly, um, I don't understand how you could be in New Orleans during Katrina, right? You was there for Katrina, been there all the way until now. Everything else that has affected black people as a whole and that they have been through. I say I'm saying they like I'm not a black person. We have been through. Right. But specifically the people in New Orleans who I'm targeting right now. And Drew had the nerve to come up and use the flag as an excuse And use his ancestors fighting in the wars as an excuse for why he will never understand why somebody would be kneeling for the flag and disrespecting it. It really bothers me because I'm like, Drew, I had family that fought in all these wars as well. They had to come back home and didn't have the same setup that your ancestors had. They had to still fight systemic racism. They still couldn't go certain places. They still had the KKK after them. They still couldn't get loans for a house or for a business. They still couldn't get jobs. They had to take lesser jobs. So for you to use the flag as some type of blindfold is just asinine and outright dangerous rhetoric. Why? Because that's going to further the beliefs of people who are incorrect and not knowledgeable about these subjects. A lot of people don't know what black veterans had to go through when they came back. So for you to say you wouldn't understand that and use your ancestry as a shield for you is some BS. Because you can use it as a shield for you because you're white and because that's what this system has allowed you to do. We've had to use it as a battering ram to be able to open up more doors for us. So I'm glad his teammates got him together because I'm I I for sure thought they was about to treat him like Adam Sandler in the longest yard and be like, bro, we're not blocking for you. We're not blocking for you. Same same thing. That locker room was going to be crazy that first day back. So I, I, I told everybody around me, look, they better get Drew Brees on the Zoom call right now. Otherwise, that locker room going to be something different when he get back. OK, I'm going to wait for to get to that one. Um, Trina, real quick. I just want to say, Trina, I'm super disappointed. I don't know if I'm going to be listening to any more of her music because she had the nerve to say that. She had the nerve to call some of the people that have been rioting and looting animals. Animals. I'm sorry, Trina. Everybody don't have it set up like what you do. I understand that your business is taking hits, right? But everybody don't have the money that you have. So people are out there getting theirs. You got to think about it, right? Because even I've had my, my, some of my family have had stores on the south side of Chicago that have been ransacked. That all the wealth that they built up was taken away. Part of that, part of that is because there was no police presence over there. Police, too busy policing on the north side, making sure that the people that are in the more cushy neighborhoods, let's call it for what it is, the people that are in the white neighborhoods are okay. Down there on the south side, my cousin told me it was, it was like a war zone. That even customers that had been coming in to the stores we're going in taking stuff. People that they knew. Right? And imagine everything. Imagine the system that allows this to happen. Right? Now, that's just there. Take this a step forward into right now. 
She's calling people animals for riot and looting when you don't even understand why they're doing it. Some people still haven't gotten their unemployment and have been unemployed for a while. They have to put food on the table. Some people didn't get the stimulus check from the government yet. That's why some people are out here riding and looting. Now, I will say, obviously, you got some people that's going to take advantage of what's going on and just get what they can get. Right. I ain't out here fighting for them. I ain't here fighting for them at all. But the people that are disenfranchised. Excuse me. And that are using this to get back what they haven't gotten yet and were promised. What more could you expect at this point in time? That takes me back to the same quote that, you know, America needs to be happy that black people only want equality. Because if we want a revenge, everything that you're seeing right now will be minimal compared to what would happen. I'm kind of upset that Spike Lee already got uh, the 40 acres as his business because I sure was thinking about doing something with that. But anyway, Trina, um, I might be done with her music because after that, I was just like, come on, bro, get it together. Up next, yo, we won't call them $50 bills no more. We call them Virgils now, in case y'all didn't know. For anybody that hasn't understood why Virgil has been trending over the past week, I just told you right there. Virgil, for a lot of you guys don't know, um, is the director of Off-White and also for, uh, it's not, it's not Louis Vuitton. Hold on. Vir- Virgil Abloh. So he was a guy that was in Kanye West's inner circle. Right. And he was always like the go to guy for helping Kanye to get some fashion together. You know, now Kanye, not to take anything away from Kanye. Kanye has always been on his fashion stuff. Right. But Virgil was one of the, the guys that was right behind him. And eventually Virgil ended up becoming the chief executive officer of Off-White, which is in Milan and is a part of Louis Vuitton. That's how big Virgil is. And he's from Rockford, Illinois. Now, here's why we call $50 Virgil. When everybody was going around donating money, right? I've been even donating money and I've, I've been using uh, some of the unemployment money I got to be able to do that. People were saying, yo, I donated match. I donated match. I donated match, right? Now, for people that are in my situation, I get, yo, there's only so much we can give because we still got to live, but we still giving what we can, right? I've donated more money than I thought that I would have to this cause because of how much I care about it and several other causes because of how much I care about it. Virgil only donated $50. I'm going to tell y'all again, Virgil is a good friend of Kanye West and is the chief executive officer of Off-White. Do y'all know how much... A pair of off-white shoes actually costs. I'm gonna give y'all three good guesses. Okay. If you said under $150, you're wrong. If you said under $200, you're wrong. Now, if you say anything over $500, you're technically right. Because a lot of Virgil shoes go between like $250 to $1,000. Right? That is the price range for his shoes. And he only donated $50. Nah, fam, don't sit right with me. Don't sit right with me. So I'm perfectly fine with us now using the term uh, Virgil for uh, $50 because there's no way, no possible way you can only donate $50 when your net worth is like 200 Virgils times that. Or should I just say a Virgil times that? Virgil's most expensive shoe is $3,450 on average. And that's the off-white Michael Jordan shoe, the the original Jordan one. So I hope Virgil continues to get flamed because that's some bull, bro. You need to get it together. You need to get it together. John Boyega, shout out to John Boyega for being a man of the people and being out there in the um, 
in the protests out there in London. I will say, though, I definitely will say I saw exactly what my man was doing when he was like, yo, I don't know if I'm going to have a career after this. I'm like, Virgil, homie, my guy, my dude. You know good and well you still going to have a career. Boy, don't play with me. If anything, people going to mess with you harder because of what's going on right now. And if they don't, you can definitely call out racism because that's, that's what it's going to be. If they get mad that you spoke up, that's what it's going to be at this point. But shout out to John Boyega. I would love to see him in more things, and I'm excited to see what's next because even uh, Jordan Peele and J.K. Rowling reached out and was like, yo, don't worry. We got you, John Boyega. So I would love to see him in either of their movies. That would be dope. That would be dope. Now, um, uh, all right, so shout out to Jay-Z. Shout out to Jay-Z because not only did he call, I believe, the attorney general in Minneapolis, but... Uh, excuse me, in Minnesota, but he also flew the lawyers that were representing Ahmaud Arbery out to Brunswick, Georgia, when they needed to attend a court hearing and they were worried that they wouldn't get there in enough time. So shout out to Jay-Z for stepping up. Also, shout out to Kanye for for uh, saying that he was going to donate, I believe, $2 million to George Floyd's daughter. A lot of people have been calling for Kanye to start speaking up and say what he's got to say, but Kanye has been really quiet. And I think, well, let me not say I think, right? I don't, I don't know about this. And this is only a, a Twitter theory that I've, I've come across that people put together. But a lot of people were saying that Kanye on low might have actually put on that MAGA hat and been saying all that stuff just to get close enough to Donald Trump to be able to get some of these people out of jail. And that if you go back and check who he donated to, during the 2016 election, it was Hillary Clinton a couple times. Caught me off guard, too. I was like, I'm sorry, what? Now, that don't excuse anything. He didn't say it. I still am like, nah, I'm not feeling you, yay, at all. But it would be very 2020-ish for Kanye at some point in time this year to be like yeah it was my whole plan all along just to get close to Donald Trump so that way I can get all these people out shout out to Kim for giving me the inspiration for the idea because you know her and Jay-Z knew I could took the bu- take the bullets and take the arrows that people would shoot at me and take all the tweets I could withstand it that would be absolutely hilarious I don't know if any of this is true because it's just a theory I saw but that would absolutely be hilarious all right Alexis Ohanan Ohanan I don't know how to say his name the Serena Williams husband co-founder of Reddit right has decided that he's going to resign from the Reddit board and requesting that a black candidate take his place and he's also pledging a million dollars to Colin Kaepernick's know your rights camp I love that I love that. Obviously, when you're with someone of Serena Williams stature, you got to make sure you step up to the bat, especially when you are as accomplished as he is. And because their child, his daughter, also is a black woman and will have to face some of these injustices that may have helped him to get to where he is in life. Right. So he has to do something about that. And I'm curious as to see who they're actually going to put in that seat and if that's something that Reddit moves forward with. That would be astonishing if that's the case. So we'll see. All right, last few things real quick in uh, group chat news where we get to say it with your chest. Um, and something that I, I probably will move to say it with your chest in the upcoming weeks. You know, the New York State Department of Labor today, oh, excuse me, not today, this was back on May 1st, announced that it had distributed over $4.6 billion in unemployment benefits since the coronavirus pandemic began impacting businesses in early March. I was unable to find the number for how much the U.S. in total has uh, distributed, but I'm imagining it's a lot of money if New York itself is doing $4.6 billion. So this leads me to the question to say, how possible, now that we know how possible it actually is, is it for black people to get reparations? Y'all got the money. Y'all clearly got the money. So how possible is it? That's something that we've been talking a little bit about in my group chats that I'm um, in in the coming upcoming weeks. I'm going to do some more research about it. And I would love to speak with you guys to see how feasible it actually is. I do think it's possible. I definitely think it's possible. I think it's it, it would also kind of be funny because then more of what Dave Chappelle predicted came true. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, and yo, that sketch is like one of the all time sketches, man. If you ain't seen it, definitely go watch that. Hide your money, y'all. It's poor folk around here. Like that was I'm rich, yeah, like all of that. Hilarious, hilarious. But it brings up the topic, yo. Is it something that could really happen? I think that's the case. And like I said, in the upcoming weeks, we'll discuss that too. Now, um, I've been watching Batwoman as of late, right, on HBO Max. And uh, you know what? We might have to put that on the docket for something we talk about too. HBO Max kind of fumbled the bag with some of the stuff that they got on on there. Well, it's not even some of the stuff, some of the programming they got, but the fact that they got three different streaming platforms, HBO Go, HBO Now, HBO Max. Very confusing, guys. Very confusing. But that's the topic for another day. I've been watching Batwoman on it, right? And unfortunately, I just saw not that long ago that Ruby Rose um, and the creators of Batwoman decided to part ways. So she will no longer be Batwoman. And that in just instead of replacing the character, they have to they're going to recast her instead. I'm kind of curious as to how that's going to go. At first, I thought that, you know, replacing just, you know, finding somebody else would be good. But then I had to go go back and think, yo, it's it's a this show is called Batwoman. It has to be about Batwoman. Right. This certainly is going to add to the diversity and the creativity that they have to be able to use on the show moving forward. But you can't just start a show with Batwoman and then somebody else ends up being a lead character. Don't work out that way. I'm curious as to who you guys think should play Batwoman moving forward. I don't know how many of you guys have watched it. It's, it's pretty okay. You know, I'm, I'm now at the point where when I watch certain shows, I'm really studying the acting that certain people are doing, especially because that's a that's something that I want to do, right? So I'm really looking to see who's good at this and who's not good at that. So I'm not, I'm not going to bash anybody for their acting chops in any way because I'm not in the positions that they are. But I will say I'm certainly interested in seeing who will be able to carry the mantle next and put on the mask. Last thing for same, uh, excuse me, group chat news. Astronomy club, astronomy sketch club. Um, it's not going to be back for a second season on Netflix. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, the astronomy club is a sketch team that started out in New York City, started here in the sketch community, same sketch community I'm a part of, and they built themselves up over the past what seven years? I want to say seven, eight years. As a, as a team to get to the point where last December they had their own Netflix show. It was the first season of their own Netflix show. Netflix, unfortunately, decided not to renew them. Right. And we just found out this past week. Apparently, people on the team knew since February. Here's why that's an issue for me. Right. The show never really got any real push. I didn't I barely saw any marketing for it in New York City. The only marketing that I saw for it were people from the show that I already know or already followed showing clips that they had, putting showing billboards like three, four different billboards. It was kind of the same four billboards around Hollywood. Right. And then a couple articles here and there written about it. Usually when Netflix has a show, you see it about it everywhere. Right. Just think about that. Every time Stranger Things dropped something back when House of Cards was a was a hit. Space Force, you've seen a bunch of stuff with Steve Carell and whatnot about that. Right. When Bird Box was out, granted, a lot of that was due to the social media push. People talking about it. But Netflix would make sure to help keep the conversation going. I didn't really see that with this. And it's super disappointing because we already don't have enough sketch shows as is. And especially sketch shows. With people of color starring in it. Um, let me. Well, okay, yes, people of color starring in it. Black people being in it. We really don't have that many of those. So it was uber disappointing to me to see that they did not renew them. I'm hoping that HBO Max can somewhere can somehow come in and um, change the situation. But from what I'm hearing, that may be the final time that this sketch group is ever able to perform together. Now, how is that? Topic for another day. But it's super disappointing that that happened. I did sign a petition to get Netflix to reconsider because I do think that this is a show that has a ton of potential, especially with more voices in comedy, especially black voices and other people of color being heard. Hopefully something can change, but we'll see. 
We'll see. All right, I know that was long, but that right there was Group Chat News. Coming up next, we'll be staying with your chest. We're going to hit you with some music. Remember, you are listening to The Alternative with your man Melvin Taylor I.I. right here. WHR 90.3 FM New York, the voice of Harlem. What up, world? It's your man, Melvin Taylor, I, I, and we are back right here. WHR 90.3 FM, New York, the voice of Harlem. This is the alternative of Melvin Taylor, I, I, radio show, a.k.a. the Alt with Mel radio show. You can follow us on the hashtag, the Alt with Mel, or on all social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We are the Alt with Mel. You'll be able to find us in our profile there. Make sure to follow, subscribe, do all of that. If you want to find me, go ahead to my website. Just redid it, MelvinTaylorII.com. Would love to know what you guys think about it. Additionally, you can also find me on Patreon. Patreon, where you can join to contribute to a tier to be able to help to foster a lot of the ideas that I have going on. Thank you so much to everybody that has been able to contribute so far. I greatly appreciate you and the journey that you're going to go on with me. I can't wait to show you all the things that I'm working on and how excited I am about them. All right. Now we got to get you said with your chest while I talk a little bit more in depth about some topics that um, that have been circulating. Right. And. First thing I got to talk about, obviously, is what are going to be the next steps after these protests? Now, these protests, I think, have been different. Not even I think. These protests, I believe and I know, have been different because of a couple of reasons. One, they're not just happening locally. They're not just happening nationally. They're happening globally. You have people in America that are protesting South America, that are protesting Europe, that are protesting China that are protesting Australia, that are protesting Africa, that are protesting. You have people everywhere that are protesting against police brutality and that black lives do matter. It's incredible to me that that's going on, right? I I, Look, 2020 has already been a huge surprise of a year to me, right? I couldn't see anything of this magnitude happening. I'm so excited that I'm here during this point in history to be able to see it. But that alone makes all of this feel so very different. And then I had a conversation with my friends and we thought about, you know, what has also made this moment so different? Why is it that this moment has more potential to go and turn into a movement and all the other ones, not all the other ones, but, you know, a lot of the big ones before this have not. Here's why. Right. When you think about I'm just talk about the black community and then I'll get to the world as a whole towards the end. The black community, right? Coming from the 60s and 70s, we had the crack epidemic hit us hard. Going into the 90s, you had the prison industrial complex hit us hard. Going into the 2000s, right? This is where I'm opening back up some more to black people in the world. You had the war on terror, right? Then you had President Obama be elected, which in some people's minds <clears throat> made it made them think racism wasn't a thing anymore because we now have a black president. Right. Racism can exist if you got a black president. Then going into that, you get Donald Trump. And now you have. The great quarantine of 2020, as I love calling it. All of these things have all been used as distractions away from the advancement and progression of justice and equality that black people have wanted. Now, some people may look at me with their heads turned up and be like, Obama was used as a way to do that. And you have to think on again. He was unable to do so much in his presidency because of how much of what I want to say, the Senate and the House of Representatives were Read how much of them were in the Republican Party. So they filibustered a lot of things that he wanted to do. I'm not saying he's the most perfect president. There are a lot of things that he did wrong, obviously. But due to that, his hands were tied and he could only do so much. And again, it was also another reason for people to say racism don't exist because you have a black president now. So when you think about all of that, we've been going through a lot. And in the one moment where we would expect nothing to happen during a quarantine when really nobody shouldn't be outside anyway because of an airborne virus that could literally kill you. 
racism still pops up. And now we're at the point in technology where everybody has a way of filming it and recording it. Previous years, you didn't have that. And even when you did have it, people still had other things going on. You had sports going on. You had politics going on. You just had regular life going on. So people would be able to be siloed into what was their regular life. Not anymore. All of that stuff is pushed to the back now. And this is what you got to focus on right here. You literally have nothing else to focus on but this. That's what I love about this moment right now. Is that no matter where you are or what it is you're trying to say, what it is you're trying to do, you have no choice but to focus on what's happening. And if you are not, you're actively choosing not to. And that's showing me what side you want. And it ain't for the side that black lives matter. It ain't for the side that people of color matter. So I think that is what contributed to the fact that this movement has become so much bigger and so much more impactful and can turn from a moment into a movement is what is what we need to do and what we need to make sure of. Right. Now, going back to the protests, a lot of people have been thinking, yo, what should be the next possible steps? Right. And even I've been thinking about that myself. And I think the first thing that I want to say is that over the next couple of weeks, one of my say with your chest topics will be a topic revolving around how we can take actionable steps, right? That's what will be coming in the upcoming weeks. Right now, I want to focus on the fact that with the police brutality that we're out here protesting against, right? A lot of that comes from training that the police officers do not have, right? Now, inherently, this system, the police system is already against, I'm going to say black people. And then you systematically can go through different people of color. Reason I'm going to say black people is because you have to tie it all the way back to slavery when police officers were slave catchers. And even if you look at it now, the first official badges, like the badges that people have now, still have symbolism that is reflective of what slave catchers had back in the day. Now, a lot of these police officers don't have the necessary training, right? And I begin to think about why. Why don't they have the training that you would expect them to be able to have? And then you come around and you see that so many of them don't have this training because, and I want you to think on this, how long do you think it takes for someone to become a police officer? If you haven't got your answer yet, don't worry, I'm about to tell you. Here it is. Police, their academy length is only 840 hours. You know how many weeks that is? You know how many weeks 840 hours is? I'm going to tell you right now, that's 21 weeks. 21 weeks. Can you believe that? A lot of people that are police officers, right, have only been trained for 21 weeks. That's crazy. Crazy. Now, now I begin to understand why you have so many people early on messing up. Because so much of their training after these 21 weeks comes from people that have already been in the job, that have learned from other people that have their own biases, that have their own ways of doing things. That's why it's so lawless whenever they do commit heinous crimes and acts. You've only been trained for 21 weeks. That ain't right. Ain't right at all. And then when when something does happen, right, or they do get caught doing something or they get in trouble. Most oftentimes they're not fired. You know, they move to another district and work in the same job. Can y'all believe that? Y'all want to know how long 
it takes for somebody to become a barber? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Barber school length is 1,500 hours. 1,500 hours. And then if I remember correctly, right, not only do you have to do your 1,500 hours of service, but then you got to go cut hair in somebody else's shop. At least this was, um, forgive me, this was the barber school in Chicago I was talking about. I'm just taking it a step further. They had people then go cut hair in other people's shop for like 60 days, and then you can go do your own thing. After people knew, all right, cool, you know what you're doing, go ahead. But getting back to the actual point, it takes more time to be a barber than it does to be a police officer. That's not right. It's not right at all. And on top of that, how many people go into this job with biases against black people and other people of color? How many go in having been raised in an environment where it's us against them? How many go in having been a part of systemic racism already? There's nothing that's helping these officers to unlearn this. There's nothing training them for any of that. Right? So that is already a huge red flag. And when I go there, I'm like, well, man, Melvin, if they only they only doing 800 or so hours, right? For training in the academy, how much money is actually spent on a training? Then I go back and look, and in most cases, around some of the major cities, I'm going to specifically point out New York, L.A., and Chicago, less than 2% of their budget is spent on training. Again, less than 2% of their budget is spent on training. Well, Melvin, why is that such a big deal? Y'all know how much of their budget? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Chicago's police budget... $1.7 $1.7 billion. Los Angeles's police budget, $1.86 billion. So basically $1.9 billion if we round it up. New York's police budget, <clears throat> $6 billion. You mean to tell me that six billion dollars is given to the New York Police Department and less than two percent of it goes to training? I want everybody to raise your hand if that make any sense to you. If you got your hand raised. I don't know how you listening to this show, but you're going to learn something today. That don't make no sense, y'all. That don't make no sense. We got to be better than that. As a society, we got to be better than that. Right? As a society, it's time for us to take that next step. Granted, there are many more steps that we need to take, Right? Initially, I was against the whole abolish the police. I'm going to get to, you know, a little bit of that a little bit later on. But there are ways of being able to abolish the police system as we know it and have public safety around. Because someone made a good point when they said when I when I read and I was speaking to uh, some of my friends when they were saying that. You can't really have a police system when it's inherently racist and the use of it. The reason it was even made was due to racism. It was literally made to catch slaves. So no matter how much money you put into reform in some way, shape or form. The system is there on its own. You would have to abolish it and create a new system to be able to make that happen. And I understand that that can't happen overnight. Right. I would love for that to happen tomorrow. But in between tomorrow and now, the purge might happen. You never know. 
So you need to be able to take steps to not only defund and abolish the police, but also create a more holistic public safety system so that way people can get the proper help when they do need it. Now, I know a lot of people are not going to agree with me. That's perfectly fine, right? There are even some times where I go back and forth with the idea, but I am very much open, obviously against a system that's created to hunt me down, right? I'm very much open to learning of the alternatives that we do have out there, right? Now, when I think about all the money that these police departments get, I then go, well, what else could this money be used for, right? I'm gonna focus on New York, because that's where I'm at right now, as you guys know. What could they be used for? Well, how about back in the education system? How about to improving public transportation? How about to some of the homelessness, homelessness, excuse me, that we have here in New York City, which is a lot. We got a lot of big buildings that be empty. And we got a lot of people on the streets that be hungry. Shouldn't be that way. And a bunch of these youth programs. People are so worried about the youth. So worried about what's going on to the generations today. Oh, they don't have enough activities to do. Yeah, because all the money is going to the cops. All of that. How about you start with that? I took it a bit further and I looked into... Uh, there's a website called change the NYPD.org that has a campaign that is NYC budget justice, right? And it talks about where Mayor de Blasio's budget priorities have gone so far. And let me just share with you a couple things so that you can understand more so why I say I think that not only over time should the police be abolished and public safety, community safety be brought up. But here's where some of the money has been going, right? Think about this. For every dollar that NYPD and corrections have gotten, 29 cents have gone to homeless services. 25 cents have gone to Department of Health. 19 cents have gone to Housing Preservation and Development. 12 cents have gone to Youth and community development and one cent has gone to workforce investment. Now, if that money is redistributed into those five departments that I just discussed, I'm not saying again, I'm not saying that things would change overnight, but I am saying that we would have a lot more positive of a society than what we do right now and have a lot more ways that you would be able to cut down on some of the criminal acts that are going on right now and especially the abuse that these police officers are doing it honestly makes no sense that that much money is given out to NYPD to LAPD to Chicago Police Department and these other agencies again get quarters dimes nickels and pennies Compared to that. So when I see a story about Dak Prescott pledging a million dollars for police training in pursuit of eliminating racism, I'm like, bro, look, your million might honestly help out a couple people, but it ain't enough. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But that money more so needs to go to. All right. What type of system could we create that wouldn't have an inherent bias against some of the people that it's sworn to protect? That's what I think needs to be done next. Those are some of the next steps that I think we need to take. Let's defund these police systems that so much money is being pumped into and pump them back into the community in a lot of ways. Because when you think about it, if they're not even trained, right? If they're not even trained over 800 hours And that's bare minimum training and a lot of stuff they have to get from other officers. What if some of these other officers, not even what if, some of these other officers, majority of these officers, don't know how to handle domestic violence situations? How are they properly trained to handle that? We already see how they're trained to handle people with counterfeit $20 bills. 
in George Floyd's case, or how they're trained to handle when they get incorrect information and bust in somebody's house in Breonna Taylor's case, rest in peace to her as well, right? How many of them are trained to handle people with opioid addictions? How many of them are trained to handle someone that may be schizophrenic, someone that's going through homelessness, right? There's only so many things that they're actually trained to be able to handle. That needs to be changed. That can't be changed if money is then defunded and redistributed in other ways. Additionally, what cops are out here running around like Batman with some of the equipment that they got on. So they already have a you're you're the person in the authority position and now you're out here running around like you Bruce Wayne Batman. Right? Abusing your power. We take some of that money away, we take some of that power away. They shouldn't be treating their employers like this. We have to remember that we are them. We employ them. We give them that money. So this leads me to say we need to pay attention to who our council members our, our council members are, who our aldermen are, right? Who is our mayor? Who is our governor? Who are our senators? I know a lot of people say, hey, vote Trump out of office. All this stuff is going to change, right? It's not the way that this works. You got to handle this system bit by bit. So that means going and being part of your community, going and helping out with the education system, going and helping out, volunteer your time within the community to help out with homelessness or whatever it is that your community, because I understand everybody's not in the same place, right? I'm saying those because those are closest to me. But going to help with your community need, if there's an after school program, go be a part of it. If there are community organizers, right? And people within the community who can help to, I hate using this term, but y'all gonna get what I'm saying by I'm using it, police the community. Let's put some power into their hands so that way until we can figure out our new public safety system or actually, matter of fact, when you do figure out the public safety system, right? You can have the officers of peace and community organizers, community leaders handling the situation accordingly. Right. What if if somebody has an opioid addiction, right? You're actually able to send somebody that studied that. To go handle the situation Rather than police officers Who may be quick to draw a gun Right That would be a lot better That would be a lot better Now granted that means that People that do study opioid addictions Right Would have to change the way in which they do things But people that would be a part of public safety That would fit under the uh, I want to say prescription addictions right now Because I'm, I'm Lacking the terminology that I want to use But you guys understand what I'm saying People that fit under that bill would then thusly be trained for it. Same thing with domestic violence and more criminal offenses as you get on or as you go down the line. But I certainly think that that's a way to do it. On top of that, some communities are already doing it. Minneapolis city council members have announced that they intend to disband the police department and invest in a community led public safety. The same place where George Floyd was murdered is already on it. Already on it. Right? They're saying if there's somebody with mental illness or somebody with disability, why don't we work with the adequate medical professional? See, I'll be, man, I'll be knowing all the words and I'll just be forgetting in the moment because I'll be going on the tangent trying to explain myself. You can use the appropriate medical professionals, right? The appropriate medical staff. To go and handle specific cases Because at that point Within this community led public safety People will be trained for that Because that's what you need to do Right Don't go the route of like Tucson, Arizona Where a council there Has now created a new class 2 misdemeanor Punishable by a maximum fine of $750 Right Right And it allows the Tucson Police Department officers to arrest anyone who basically is filming them. It is now illegal to take video of a uniformed police officer. Illegal. So imagine all these videos that we see, right? Imagine watching the George Floyd video 
And then being told, yeah, you can't do that here. That's illegal. Ice Cube's already came out and said, I'm never going there again. Y'all got me messed up. So y'all fix that. Don't go that route. You got two very extreme extremes right here. But we already in an extreme situation with Corona and quarantine. Everything else that I mentioned that's happened this year. Just go all the way with the community led public safety, y'all. It's what we need right now. How can you still be okay with a system that was built to discriminate against people, target people unjustly? And I understand it's not going to happen in a day. But the fact that Minneapolis is already doing it proves that it can be done. 100% proves that it can actually be done. Now, until we get there, right? I do think that it should be mandatory for all the current police officers to always have their cameras turned on. Your body cam should be turned on 24-7. We should never drop audio from it. And if you decide to tamper with it in any way, shape, or form, fine suspension, and then heavier penalties depending on the case. Right? Everything that involves any member of the public, any citizen, should be documented. Why is there so much stuff? Why are some of these officers having 70 different violations against them and still having their job? A lot of this stuff that's just racking up shouldn't be going on, y'all. Come on now. We all better than this. We all better than this. And the fact that we still allow people like this, especially in a job where they have the authority and the power to actually murder someone. The penalties for what can happen to them should be higher. And I will say they should be paid more. They should be, especially for putting their lives on the line. But. You know, we can worry on how much they're going to get paid once we get to our public safety system, because this current police system right now ain't going to work. Last thing that I do want to say about the. um, How I'm how I'm thinking about this public safety system and whatnot, right? And how I'm thinking about the police department overall and how it's set up to get people. You know, this past weekend, New York suspended habeas corpus. Meaning that if the police officers arrested someone, they could keep them detained for longer than 24 hours. There were people that had been arrested Friday that hadn't been told why they were arrested. And that were just now being released. They were locked up all weekend for simply protesting. For protesting police brutality. Never has that been done. This is again why we need to pay attention to the people that we're electing. The people that we put in charge. So that way we know when things like this occur. We can't continue to keep this person in office. We can't allow For this to happen and for innocent people to suffer consequences that's not meant for them. Makes no sense, y'all. Makes no sense. Um, I want to give a couple updates because the next thing I want to move on is just talking about some of the companies that are here um, that have been posting about how much Black Lives Matter and how they want to dismantle white supremacy. So um, real quick, I'm going to say... Rand Paul is the lone senator right now who is upholding the anti-lynching bill because he wants some of the terminology changed because he says that minor bruising could actually be considered to be lynching. So, you know, we need to change that terminology so that the bill can be just right. Hey, Kentucky, get this man out of office. It don't make no sense that he out here doing this. How many of y'all even knew that lynching still ain't a crime? Yeah. After everything that's been going on these past couple weeks and you want to hold it up over some terminology because minor bruising could be considered. Man, people know the difference. People 100% know the difference. And he's saying that because that minor bruising, right, could lead to 10 years in prison. 
people not just gonna slap a lynching. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm, I'm like talking about this right now. People are not just gonna be like, oh man, you was trying to lynch somebody for some minor bruises, Rand Paul. Cut that out. You showing your true colors. We appreciate you doing so. You need to pack your things and go ahead and get out of here. So Kentucky, do me a favor and go ahead and get my man up out of office. I would greatly appreciate that. All right. Updates on Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. Um, George Floyd, as you guys know, all the officers have been arrested. And like I said before, Minneapolis has decided to move forward with a uh, public safety system and intend to disband the police department. Breonna Taylor, the FBI have reopened the case. But there's been no other word since that. I feel as if Breonna Taylor's name is being lost and everything is going on. And we need to do a lot better of a job discussing her and discussing what's going on with her case. So let's make sure we don't lose this moment that we're in right now. And we continue the momentum for her. So her birthday was last Friday. Her birthday was last Friday. She should be here. And the fact that she's not and that her name's being forgotten is not right. We need to make sure that we do right by her. And we hope to protect anybody else that goes through any type of situation or gets close to any situation like that. Justice for Breonna Taylor. Make sure that you're doing something about it. Make sure that you're donating. Make sure that you're paying attention to who your officials are. Please continue to retweet, share, post about her. Sign any of the petitions that come across you with her name on it that is stating that we need to have those officers arrested because we do. They should not be out scot-free right now. They really shouldn't. With Ahmaud Arbery, the one update that I do have is that the men who was recording the video was caught using a racial slur in the video after catching up with them. So, oh boy, it's about to get crazy. Oh, excuse me. Let me correct that. It was not the man that recorded the video, but I'm sorry. The man that actually chased him down and shot him used the racial slur to describe him as he was laying over the ground, as Ahmad was laying on the ground and he was laying over him. That's what he did. So the judge has ruled that there is enough evidence to try the two men and to uh, suspect one more on murder charges. I'm hoping that that moves along quickly because we need to have justice for Ahmad as well. Ahmad's name has been secondary in a lot of this, obviously, with George Floyd's being so uh, with with it being on video, being able to see everything that's happened. But again, we need to make sure. That we continue to talk about Ahmad, we continue to talk about Rihanna, because these things need to be handled ASAP. Moving up next, man, I really want to talk to y'all about these companies that are out here that are posting these squares for Black Lives Matter. They're saying that we stand up against white supremacy. We want to dismantle white supremacy, right? I enjoy what a lot of y'all are doing. Y'all saying, hey, man, we're going to be better about what's going on out here. But here's the thing that I want to say to everybody that's listening. Make sure that with all these people that are out here, right? That are all these companies, I should say, that are posting all these things. Make sure that they're actually sticking to that. Make sure that they're not just doing it for the trend. And that they're actually making holistic changes. There's no reason that there shouldn't be a black person or a person of color on your executive board. There's no reason that there shouldn't be a black person or a person of color that's a manager that's in a position of power within your company. Right? There are certainly qualified people that are out here to do it. And I'm not saying just pick old any old body and say put them in charge, right? That's not what I'm calling for. But let's all quit the BS and act like there haven't been a lot of very qualified people of color that have not been given positions simply because of the color of their skin, simply because of the background that they come from, simply because of their religious views. That needs to change. 
So if these companies are out here posting, we care about black lives, blackout Tuesday. We want to make sure that we do right moving forward. Hold them to it. Hold their feet to the fire. Because I've seen a lot of people come out and air out their own company for practices that they have had to go through or discrimination that they face there. And man, look, I was this close to airing out a couple companies myself. But I ain't going to do that. I'm going to go about it a different way. And I'm going to make sure that nobody else goes through what I had to go through. So please continue to hold these companies' feet to the fire as this stuff is going on. One thing that I want to focus on in particular, right, because this is a radio show, record companies that are out there. Y'all saying y'all want to stand with artists, right? What's up with all these slave deals that y'all be giving artists, right? Where you count albums that they put together as mixtapes and still keep them in album deals and say that the music has to be... So I'm, I'm forgetting the language, but it has to be like subjective to popular demand. So that way it has to essentially be a pop hit to be counted as something on their contract. That's why some of these artists are always broke because some people in the record labels get to determine whether the music that they put out was successful or not based on their own opinion. So they have to stay in these deals. I see some record companies are saying, you know, we're not going to use the term urban anymore. You know, we want to be better for our community and the community that, you know, we've basically built upon. Here's what I got to say to them record companies. How about y'all give some of these people their masters back? Hmm? You got a lot of starving artists out here who could definitely use those masters to be able to eat. Let them live and build off of the work that they did instead of y'all. In case some of y'all didn't know, you know, rest in peace to Little Richard. But remember when Michael Jackson bought the Beatles catalog? Did you know that the Beatles own Little Richard's masters? Take it a step further. Did you know that Little Richard early in the Beatles career was helping them with music? Was showing them certain chords to play or how to structure certain songs. The same people that he worked with to help out to become who they were ended up eating off of him. And it wasn't until Michael Jackson bought their masters was he able to give them to Lil Richard. We shouldn't have stories like that. So how about some of these record companies that are still eating off of people that have worked and slaved to get to the point to where they are? And that are out here broke as a joke. Yeah, get them their masters back so that way they can eat. Definitely do that. All right, y'all. So we getting close to time. So I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm just bring up something real quick that bothered me this past week. Right. We had a bunch of people up in Dykeman. Dykeman, for people that don't know, is a like a, a uptown area in Manhattan that is primarily um, full of people of Hispanic descent, primarily Dominicans. There was a video that floated around of Dominicans discriminating against black people that were up there saying that they didn't want them up there because they were going to come riot and loot. Right. And thus, it started to trend online. This took it a step further when there were certain people within the community that came out that are Dominicans. They were saying that, yo, we're not black. So stop associating with black people. Don't put black people ahead of you. You're not black. Put our people first. Here's what I want to say to some of them. Y'all know the only difference between y'all and us is a boat stop, right? Y'all know that y'all don't just have Spanish blood in y'all. Y'all also have African blood in y'all too. And that y'all also share the same island that Haiti does. Me, personally, I don't know if I'm going to ever go back uptown. I don't know if I'm going to ever go back up to Dykeman and hang out up there. Because I see what's going on now. And it's disappointing. It's heartbreaking, really, because I enjoy my time up there. But that's not right. We all the same, man. We all the same. Again, the same boats that drop people off 
in Jamestown, to drop people off down south, to drop people off in Virginia. Them same boats went down to the Caribbean, man. Them same boats led to y'all to get to where you were. On Haiti, oh, excuse me, in Haiti and in the Dominican Republic. That's the only difference between us. So I applaud everybody over the past week or so. It's helped to clean up that mess that has contributed to telling people and informing them of their history. But some of y'all need to learn, man. The only difference between us really is a boat stop. So cut out all that extra stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to get into stay tailored this week. Who was tailored? Who was untailored this past week as we begin to wrap up the show? All right. The people who are the most tailored this week and that I want to give it up to all the protesters out there that were tearing down Confederate statues. I love y'all up and down the East Coast. I've seen people at these protests tearing down Confederate statues and it has been amazing. It's been so wonderful to see that because it makes no sense that people are going to schools that are named after Robert E. Lee. Right. Don't make no sense. So I'm so glad that y'all are doing this out there. Y'all are really doing the Lord's work. We appreciate y'all. Power to y'all, man. Power to y'all. Thank you all for staying tailored this week. Who else? The United States Marine Corps. Why? Because they banned the Confederate flag. No longer can you use that as a symbol or have that around there if you in the U.S. Marine Corps. Shout out to y'all as well for being tailored this week, man. That should have been done a long time ago. But I'm going to say shout out to y'all this week for doing that. We appreciate that. Who was untailored this week? If I got to explain why Drew Brees was, then clearly you have not been listening to what's going on in this show. Going a step past that. Anybody that's been racist this past week, especially you, you are very much untailored. And I see a lot of y'all getting exposed on social media. Jake Fromm saying that, you know, guns should only be given to elite white people. He about to lose his job as a Buffalo Bills backup quarterback real soon. Real, real soon. It's a shame you did all that work in Georgia just for you to lose it once you got up north. That's a shame. Oh, well. So for anybody else out there that's uh, extremely racist. Good luck, buddy. It's been some long weeks for y'all And it's gonna be even longer ones coming very soon Have fun The last group of people that were untailored this week Was those cops that pushed over that old man I hope y'all lose y'all jobs swiftly And never get one again Why y'all doing that to that old man Who's literally on y'all side And bringing y'all a helmet Don't make no sense to me But hey You know do what y'all wanna do don't worry, we're going to make sure that all y'all up there are disbanded in due time soon. Because now people are starting to see it's not just black people that are being treated that way. But you see all these people out here that are out here fighting for justice for black people are also being treated that way. You know, my father used to tell me all the time, man, anything that happens to another group normally comes after it's been practiced on black people at some point in time. Another, another reason why I had to say what I said about you know, how unfortunate it was for the Dominicans or let me not say, you know, some people within the Dominican community, because there are a lot of people that know their history. And that's unfair to paint a broad brush, excuse me, a broad brush to them. Y'all know that after they deal with black people a certain way, Hispanic people are next on the list. And then they just move down the next group of people, the next ethnic group. And then they move down to the next ethnic group. Right. So now you have some white people similar to this old man that are also being beat out in the street. And it goes to show you, hey, man, look. Just because it's been happening to us don't mean it can't happen to you. So those cops are also untailored this week. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for tuning into the radio show. Remember, you can find me on YouTube, Melvin Taylor. II. You can also find this show on WHCR every single week. Monday night, 11.55 p.m. until 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, again, you can find us also on MelvinTaylorII.com, all right? Stay blessed, stay favored, always stay tailored. If you got a dream, see it through. I'm going to see you next time on the show. Peace and love.